Hello and welcome to this tutorial from Profoto Vector. My name is Mike Davies and in today's tutorial we're going to be looking at how to add a vignette to a photo using Affinity Photo. So I'll start by opening the image I want to use so I can go to File, Open and search my computer or Open Recent if I've opened this image before. So let me just go to File, Open. So here is the photo I want to use. I'm going to click on that photo. I can either double click on it or click on it and then click Open. So this photo is already edited. I just need to add the vignette to it. There are actually two ways I can add a vignette inside of Affinity Photo. The first is to go to Filters, Colors, Vignette. So that's actually just going to add the vignette directly to this background layer, directly to the image layer. That's going to be a more destructive option. If I wanted to go with a non-destructive option, I can go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Colors, Vignette. So this is going to add the live vignette version of this. So this is a live filter. That essentially means that instead of adding this directly to the layer, it's going to add this as an adjustment layer or as a live filter layer so that I can go back at any time and double click on this and make adjustments to this if I wanted to. So that's just a more non-destructive option. But here is the live vignette panel and the first option is for the exposure. This is going to essentially determine if your vignette is going to be black or white and how much black or white it's going to be. So when I drag this to the left, that's going to make this a black vignette. And the further left I go, the darker it's going to be. So there you can see that's the darkest this will be right here. If I go all the way to the right, that's going to make this a white vignette. So this is the value of the vignette. The higher the value, the more prevalent that vignette's going to be. So in this case, let's go with something like two and a half. That way we can see the vignette. This is a lot more intense than I would usually do for a photo, but just so you guys can see the vignette for the rest of the way. But next up is hardness. So this is going to be the transition of the vignette from the black to the alpha or the transparency so that we could see the photo below. So if I increase the hardness, it's going to make this intense circle that you can see here. So obviously this is not what we want. There's going to be no softness on the border here of this circle for the vignette. And if I decrease the hardness, it's going to make this very soft to the point where it's going to encroach upon the subject of our image. So that's not what we want either, but that's what this looks like as soft as it'll possibly go. So what I want to do is find a happy medium here and just allow the transition to be soft enough to where you can't really see where the vignette starts or ends. We want a nice natural transition. So I'll probably go with, I'll go with around 72 for now. Scale is going to be the size of the vignette. So that's the circle or the ellipse in the center of the vignette. And when I decrease this value by dragging it to the left, you'll see the circle will get smaller and smaller until it's just way too small like that and this percentage will get smaller and smaller. So I can go back up to 100%, which is the original value, or I can go beyond 100%, and you can see that as I increase the scale more and more, the vignette's gonna get pushed further and further out to the corners until eventually it just disappears. So that's what the scale value does. It just increases or decreases the size of that circle or ellipse in the center. So I'm gonna go with around 108. Finally, shape is going to determine whether this is a perfect circle or an ellipse shape. If it's set to 100%, that means this will be a perfect circle. And if I drag this to the left, that will start to squish this and make this more of an ellipse. And the ellipse will get more and more squished as I go more and more to the left. In my case here, I'm going to squish this a little bit because as you can see, the vignette by default will go over the corners if it's a full circle but it's going to go off the page here. And so the top and the bottom portions do not contain any vignette. What I like to do is just squish this a little bit so that the vignette does cover parts of the top and bottom of the image. Usually that's gonna be somewhere in the 70s range. So I'll go with 77%. Before we finish this off, I do wanna point out some other features. So for one, you have an opacity slider here in the bottom left corner. If I click this drop down, that's going to bring up a slider and I can drag this to the left or right by dragging it to the left and making it less than 100%. We're starting to take away from the intensity of the vignette and that's going to make it more transparent and therefore more subtle, as you can see. So I went with the value around 72 for this. That way we have a more subtle vignette. Next to that, you have the blend mode. So this is going to apply a blend mode to the vignette itself 
and you can preview what that blend mode is going to look like as you hover your mouse over each mode. So that gives you a nice live preview there, which is pretty cool. I'm going to keep this set to normal. Finally, up top, you have three buttons. So the first one is going to be merged. That's just going to merge the actual vignette to the image layer. So it wouldn't be non-destructive anymore. It would merge this directly on top of the image layer. And we couldn't click on the live filter to edit it at a later time. If you didn't want to go with any of these changes, you would hit delete. That would get rid of the vignette entirely and it would close out the live vignette panel. Finally, the reset button would reset all the values back to the default values. So that would just start you over before you made all the changes here to the vignette and it would keep the live vignette panel displayed here. But if you wanted to keep your changes, you can come up top here and just exit out of the live vignette. So clicking that X there, there we have our vignette. You can come over here to the live filter and if you wanted to change this, Let's say you made several edits to your image after the fact, or you added some things like text, etc., inside of your session, and then decided you wanted to come back and change this. Just double click on here, and that's gonna bring up the live vignette settings, and you can make adjustments to this. For example, we can make the exposure more subtle, like so. Exit out of here, and there we have our vignette. All right, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Pro Photo Vector for more premium software tutorials. You can also check out my website at profotovector.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.